Okay, welcome to my online demonstration of the slide map. First thing I would like you to do, as always, is start a 2D sketch. Choose the XY plane. And what I like to do is I like to look at the drawing and you know, I like to draw the overall. So I look at that slide mount and it looks like it's eight inches long by five inches tall. So I'm going to draw the rectangle as such. And notice how I'm going to draw around the origin with the in the center. I'm going to place my dimensions on here. And I'm going to place that first dimension to be eight inches long. And I'll zoom out. And it's going to be five inches tall. I'll place that dimension. And what I want to do is I like to lock it into the origin. So I'm going to dimension to the origin. And I always put the function in by clicking on the height dimension divided by two. Hit enter and you'll notice that it centers it up height wise. So let me do left and right. I'm going to choose the left side to the origin. Click and put the length divided by two and hit the green check. You will see that it's fully constrained and uh, all centered up. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this little cutout right here. And I'm going to sketch some lines in here. And notice that I don't really look at or place the dimensions as I draw it. So I'm going to put my dimensions after I draw it. So I'm going to put a dimension in here. This dimension is going to be three inches. And this dimension here is going to be three inches. Enter. Notice all along the way, everything's fully constrained. So now I'm going to, I'm going to trim this out. I'm going to get rid of these extra lines now. Trim this here and trim that there. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and, you know, you cannot use the fillet tool in this case. And I'll show you why here in a minute. So I've shown you guys this before, where I just draw a circle, put it at a random spot down here, and I'm going to place the dimension on there. Now on the drawing, it shows a radius of three inches. So in this case, this is diameter, so we need to double that. So I'm going to type in six for the diameter. That will be a three inch radius. I'm going to take that circle. I'm going to constrain it to be tangent to this line right here. Let's go to my constraints. I'm going to choose the tangent constraint. I'm going to click on that circle and click on that line. Notice how it locks it in to be tangent. That's very important to do that first. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this circle or this arc over to this intersecting endpoint, this corner right here. In order to do that, I'm going to use a coincident constraint, which is right here. I'm going to go and I'm going to choose this circle, I'm going to choose that corner point right there. All right, so what we need to do next is we need to trim this circle, and it'll make it an arc, and then we can also trim this corner out. So let me go to trim. I'm going to trim this out, and I'm going to trim the corner out as well. So notice how, number one, it opens this back up, this arc, and it turns it green. So it actually needs another dimension. It deletes this dimension off. Um, so speaking of deleting dimensions, I'm going to delete this dimension as well. I'm going to delete that dimension because it's a diameter dimension. I want to make that a radius dimension just so that it matches our drawing. And then I need to reapply this linear dimension here for three inches. And notice when I do that, it locks that arc back in and it shows that it's fully constrained. Okay, so I'm good to go with this sketch. I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch. Zoom out. I'm going to extrude and extrude this. I always like to extrude back behind my sketch. That distance is four inches. Hit OK. Now, when I look at this and I look at the drawing, the rest of the slide mount, there are some other features that need to be cut out. We're going to break those features up. 
and I'm going to cut out one area and then I'm going to go to a, another sketch and another feature. I'm going to cut out another area and, you know, we're going to divide it up. So the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 2D sketch. I'm going to do it on the top. I'm going to roll the part over and I'm going to do it very similar to what I did before. I'm going to draw these lines here and notice you know, I keep them straight. Keep, make sure it's locked in and perfect, perfectly straight. I'm going to select to the edge. I'm going to go ahead and close this though. It's very important. If you want to do any type of extrude, you got to have a closed geometry. Then I'm going to apply my dimensions. So we're going to put a dimension on the back side because that's where it's referenced. And that dimension there is going to be two inches. And then I will place this dimension from that line to the left side. That dimension is going to be four inches. Okay. Notice whenever I get to apply those dimensions, I have this fully constrained again. So one last thing we need to add in here is we're going to put a fillet. So we can use the fillet tool here. And that fillet tool has a radius. If you check the drawing, it has a radius of one inch. We're going to go ahead and apply that one inch radius fillet. And then we should be good to go. We're going to finish the sketch. And I'm going to do an extrude cut. Make sure we select our sketch geometry. I'm going to do an extrude cut. And I'm going to send that down two and a half inches. So the dimension is five inches tall. And it looks like it's half of that. So we're going to go two and a half inches and hit OK. Now, uh, that's one feature. And notice you know, we can keep track in our browser over here. I am going to apply the next feature, and we need to create another sketch to do that. So I'm going to go 2D sketch, spin around to the back, apply it on that back plane. Once again, I'm going to draw my lines in here and make sure I draw straight lines, but the sizing and the positioning doesn't matter just as long as you're snapping to the edge and that you keep them straight. I'm going to go ahead and close this once again. I'm going to close this geometry, or this loop here. So it's all looped together with closed geometry. Next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and apply dimensions. So the dimension that we have from here to the back corner here, that dimension is going to be 5.5. Okay. And we're going to apply a dimension from this line to the bottom that dimension is going to be 2.5 okay so we have our dimensions notice it's fully constrained it turned purple we need to put that fillet in this bottom corner so i'm going to go to fillet and that also has a one inch radius and now we're good to go fully constrained we have that one inch radius fillet finish sketch i'm going to go ahead and extrude cut and extrude cut it out and I'll do a distance of all hit okay and there we have it okay now these lines that you see on here they show up because of how we do the fillet and how it merges surfaces uh, it really should be fine so our next feature that we're going to put in we're going to put this little cutout down here this rectangular cutout so I'm going to start 2d sketch I'm going to go to the right side plane and I'm going to get set up here. I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to snap that rectangle to the bottom line. It should snap to that bottom. Drag it over, make it any size, and then I apply my dimensions afterwards. So I'm going to apply the width dimension. That width dimension is 1.5. Green check. Then I'm going to apply, I'm going to choose the right side, the right vertical edge to the far right of the object. So I'm going to choose that distance of 1.25, hit enter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the height. So I will apply that dimension and the height is going to be 0.75, hit enter. Notice how it's fully constrained 
It turns it all purple. At that point, I'm complete. I can finish my sketch. And I'm going to extrude cut that sketch geometry and do a cut. And I'm going to also do a, an extent of all this time as well. Hit OK. And notice how that cuts all the way through. And we're good to go there. I'm going to go to my home. we got one last feature to add. And that is the hole that runs down through the top. Now I'm going to use the hole feature as I think that you should get comfortable with using this tool. Let's go to hole. And we can use the linear uh, sketch placement here. But we need to choose the face. So we're going to choose the face here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to choose the reference geometry. So the reference is, if you look at your drawing, uh, we can reference from the back two inches. Now, I'm, I'm used to hitting Enter here. Don't hit Enter. Uh, as If you hit Enter, it gets you out of this command. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the second reference, which would be to the left here. That's also two inches. Once again, don't hit Enter because it'll get you out of this command, and we're not done. So we need a straight through hole here, terminations through all. This is all fine. One last thing we need to do input for is the diameter. That diameter is 1.75. I'm going to hit Apply. And we can pretty much get out of this because that's all there is. That hole goes all the way through. And that's all of our features for the slide mount. Now, here's what I want you to do. In order to submit this thing and, and most of our drawings that from here on out, I want you to slide this object or this part to the right side, far right side. I want to see your name up here, your Autodesk ID name. And then we're going to go ahead over here and right click and go into I Properties. We're going to go to the Physical tab, update it, and slide this screen to the left as close as you can, though. Here's our volume. I'm going to go to the Snipping tool. All right, so how I want you to turn this assignment in is I want you to use the Snipping tool. And you're going to go to New. And then I want you to draw a box on these three items here, the volume calculation, your part, and then up here, I want to see your Autodesk ID. I want you to save this snip. You're going to file Save As. And then you're going to type the slide mount underscore your last name. And then I want you to attach it to the assignment in Classroom. And that's it. I hope you guys have success in this and enjoy watching this video. Thank you.